Okay, so today's topic is we're going to be talking about transformations of functions. Um, take notes as I write down these key information. So here we go. These are our basic functions. You should know all of these. You know, though, let's go and cross this one out, and let's cross out one of our x bar two. Okay? But for each of those, each of these, excuse me, you should be able to make a graph of the parent and tell me about its properties. Properties, I mean everything that was on that concept worksheet, like domain, range, the zeros, um, even odd and either, the metric, um, is it a function, is it odd to odd, one to one function. Also, you should be able to do a basic transformation like this without a calculator. You should be able to sketch it and tell me its properties. Okay, we will have these on memory quizzes coming up, so be ready. Now, let's go ahead and summarize. Whoops, I don't want to do that. So when I write, I have to go to this mode, and then I have to scroll. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'd like to do is to summarize the basic transformations. So you can see here, we've got the general equation here. Whoops, I forgot the A, and there we go. Where A is going to represent a vertical stretch or shrink. Okay. Now, all of this will be reviewed from your Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus course. Now, the D is going to represent the vertical shift. Notice both of those affect the y value of your ordered pairs. Okay? So, if you look at our chart here, if you have an operation happening outside the parenthetical statement, then this will affect all of your y values. Now, let's talk about a change within the parenthetical statement. Okay? Now, Within the parenthetical statement, it's a little bit different in that it's either its opposite value or it's reciprocal. So, for example, plus C. This is going to be your horizontal shift, but it's always the opposite of the value of C. Okay? Horizontal shift, and it's always going to represent the opposite of the value. Now, the B is a horizontal stretch or shrink. That means that your graph, if you were to take it and stretch it with like a rubber band horizontally or shrink it in, horizontal, sorry, kind of lost all this together, stretch or shrink. Now, you know like the shift was its opposite value, for the horizontal stretch or shrink, you're actually going to take the reciprocal of the value and multiply it by it, okay? So let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. So if it's inside the parenthetical statement, this will affect the x values of your ordered pairs. Okay. So if, like we said, you add or subtract inside the parenthetical statement, it will move your graph to the right C or to the left C. Now when it's f of x plus C, this would be moving left a left movement, this is the opposite. Since this is positive, we are going to move to left. So for example, if it was f, f of x plus five, then we would actually move left five units. Okay, now here it's gonna be the opposite again. So we're gonna to move to the right, to the positive direction. So if it was f of x minus five, we would actually move right five units. Now, we're going to stay consistent in that when we're adding and subtracting, it's the opposite. Now, with the multiplication of a factor, we're going to actually be multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, again, it will only affect the x values. So, if b has a value of v of 5, let's say f equals 5x, we would take all of the x values and we would multiply them by one-fifth of their value and the y value would stay the same. So you can imagine then, I would take my graph and I would extend it toward the y-axis, because every x value would have one-fifth of its value. Now, if we take, multiply by a negative one, then we are gonna take every x value and multiply it by its opposite, and the y stays the same. So you can imagine this then will be a rotation around the y-axis, or reflection, I'm sorry, reflection on the y-axis. Now let's talk about what if there are operations done outside of the parentheses. Now this represents a vertical shift, and it stays consistent with the number, so if we're adding 5, we shift up 5. 
in here, again, vertical shift, and this is we would move down B. Like, for example, if it's this X value stays the same, so I take the Y value and subtract B. So I would take, in this example, take the Y value and add B. Okay? Now, for when we're multiplying by A, again, for the, when it's outside the parenthetical statement, it does exactly what the number says. So the X value will remain the same, but I take the Y values and I multiply it by the value of A. So if that were 5, I would take all the Y values and multiply them by 5. So you can see I'd be stretching my graph like it's a rubber band. Now here, I would take all the Y values and multiply it by its opposite. And this then would cause it a reflection across the x-axis. Now let's do a couple of examples so this can make more sense. So here, I'm giving you the function, and you have to do the transformation. So looking at the first one, we're going to do a horizontal shift of three units. And then we're going to do a vertical shift of two units. Now, because it's the opposite of three, remember, it's a negative three, so we're going to move right three. So I'm going to take every point now, and I'm going to move to right three, one, two, three, up two. So the new ordered pair would be right there. I should do it in a different color. One, two, three, up two. There's a new ordered pair. Okay, do the same. One, two, three, up two. Now, you'll notice that the shape of my image stays the same. I'm just moving it over and up. There we go. Okay, now on the second one, you notice that we're multiplying outside of the parenthetical statement, so it will affect the y value. So the x value stays the same, but every y value we're going to multiply by 2. So the first y value I have is negative 2, 4. So x remains the same, but I'm going to multiply by 2, so it would be 8. So negative 2 up 8. And do the same thing for here. The y value is 3, so I'm going to multiply it by 2, which is 6. The y value is 0, so 0 times 2 is 0. The y value is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So it's like I took a rubber band and took this graph and stretched it. Okay? Try another type of example. Now notice here it's inside the parenthetical state, so it's going to affect the x value. So that means the y value stays the same, and it's the opposite of every x value that's given. So for example, here I have negative 2, 4. So my new point order pair would be a positive 2, 4. So I go over 2, up 4. Now, 0, 3, the opposite of 0 is just 0, so it's going to be 0, 3. And this one is 1, 0, so now it's going to be negative 1. Now, in the beginning, you might have to do every point by hand, but eventually then you'll just see that, oh, we're reflecting across the y-axis. This is going to be here. And you'll get quicker at this and understand what each number does to impact the graph. Okay, now here, again, we notice that it's going to be a horizontal stretch or shrink. Now remember, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the original x value and multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2, and the y value stays the same. So here, the first order pair, I have negative 2, 4. So I multiply by 2, so it's negative 4, 4. So negative 4, 4. Because it's a horizontal, I'm stretching away from the y-axis. Now 0, 3, of course, is 0 times 2, which is 0. So it stays the same, 0, 3. Now 1 times 2 is going to be 2. And then this is 4, so it's going to be over 8. There we go. Okay. And we've got just two more here. Now this is going to be affecting the y value of the ordered pair because it's outside the parenthetical statement and it's the opposite. So x remains the same, but y becomes its opposite. So the first ordered pair is negative 2, 4. So when we do this transformation, x stays the same, but it's a negative 4. So negative 2, down 4. And this will be 0, negative 3. Well, the opposite of 0 is 0, the opposite of negative 1, 1. So you can see we're doing a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, and the last one, when we notice, I don't know, do you notice the setup? It's not quite like what we said earlier. We said earlier we would have A times F, and then it would be some variable B's, and then X minus the C plus B. Do you notice 
If we have a number being multiplied by the value variable x, we need to write it, we need to just factor out the coefficient. So it would be x minus 3. And that gives us more information. So we can see we're making two transformations on the x value. We're going to be shifting it, and it's always the opposite, so we're going to go right to 3. And then we're going to have to do a horizontal stretcher shrink by the reciprocal. So we're going to have to multiply by 1 half. And we're going to have to do these two moves, computations, to the x value. Now, which one do I do first? Do I, do I add 3 or do I multiply? Well, it's like order of operations. You do the correct order of operation first. So I'm always going to multiply first. Okay? So, for example, my first example is negative 2, 4. So I have to multiply by 1 half, so I get negative 1 fourth, and then I'm going to add 3, so I'm moving to the right 3, so it becomes 2 fourth. So over 2 of 4, notice the y value did not change. Okay? And now I do the same thing for the next value, 0, 3. So first thing I multiply by 1 half, well 1 half times 0 is a 0, and then I'm going to add 3. So now I have 3 3. So I go over 3 of 3. Okay. Here is the value is 1, 0, so multiply by 1 half, which is 1 half, and then I'm going to add 3, so it becomes 3 and a half, 0. So over 3 and a half, 1, 2, 3 and a half, 0. Okay, and in this last point, you do the exact same thing, so it's over 4, so I multiply by 1 half, which is 2, add 3, which is 5. Okay, I hope that this has helped. Now make sure you answer the couple questions that are at the end of this video and submit to your form.